Hey everybody, it's Charlie. We got all kinds of Justice League Aquaman stuff happening. I also included some Arrow at the end of this. There's a new round of the Flash Ring giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber, leave a comment on this video. So just because so much stuff happened, I'm going to start with Aquaman, then I'll talk about the Arrow stuff. So Jason Momoa was talking a lot about where his character is, how he fits into the Justice League, but they just started shooting the Aquaman movie this week. So the way he was talking about his character is he says the guy was never really accepted on land. He was never really accepted in Atlantis. He's a half-breed, but he's the best of both worlds. He just doesn't know how to handle his power, so it's kind of a coming of age from a young man to a man or a man to a king. He's lost a lot of things, and he's got to cope. He's an outsider. And then they said that that would continue through to Justice League. He'd be this big outsider character. As you've seen during the Justice League trailers, he definitely seems like a good person initially. He's not like an asshole or anything because he saves that dude that looks like he crashed his boat out in the ocean. This drinks on him before he goes on his way and bumps into Batman. But you can tell just based on that trailer, after Batman explains the threat of what's going on, they're all in their armor fighting the parademons, he starts to loosen up a little bit, and it's the same for Batman. Like, they're all very antisocial people until later in the movie when they come together. Arthur Curry. I hear you can talk to fish. It's good to see you playing well with others again. Just like a bat. I dig it. Maybe temporary. But if you happen to live in Queensland, Australia, they're shooting a ton of the movie there. They're also filming in Newfoundland, Sicily, and Tunisia. So a couple of those locations, like Sicily, for example, you can assume that they're probably going for the architecture so that it can double for some Atlantis scenes. Because you look at this New 52 run, you see it has a lot of Greek, Roman aspects to it. But you guys can let me know, if you've been reading the Aquaman comic books recently, what you think about the title, what you want them to include from his character. Just because it takes so long to get movies going, it takes a long time to write scripts. Most of this is taking from New 52, the more recent stuff. Rebirth was kind of in the works when they were working on this script. So I'm not expecting to see a whole bunch of Rebirth in here. And even Justice League, the Rebirth team in Justice League is completely different. It's more like Suicide Squad because you have Killer Frost, you have Lobo. So if you're looking for Aquaman comics to read for the Aquaman movie, I would recommend that you start with the Seven Seas storyline, which is basically Jeff John's New 52 run. He definitely butched up Aquaman, and even though Peter David classic Aquaman is pretty cool too, I'm not expecting him to get his hand chopped off or anything like that anytime soon. Jason Momoa would probably be down to do that, but if they haven't done something like that in seven seasons of Walking Dead to Rick Grimes' character, then they're probably never going to do it to Aquaman. But we do have Black Manta, the actor who plays him, is just getting all jazzed up. I always love it when the actors that are relatively new to big comic book films just go out and start binging the comic book for the movie that they're in. So side note, if you are a big Black Manta fan and it's been a while since you've seen anything with him in it, he is huge during Young Justice because of Aqualad's character. So rewatch a lot of the Netflix Young Justice stuff because it's awesome and they're actually coming back during Young Justice Season 3, but we can do a separate video about that later. But if you're not jazzed up about Aquaman already, just watch Amber Heard here being adorable. Push. Switch. Down. Go! But leave all your requests for more Justice League bonus videos in the comments below. There was that Lego set that had Steppenwolf in it, but we kind of already know what Steppenwolf looks like. He's going to be freaking huge. He's going to wreck the Justice League. So it's not exactly news. They may or may not work him into one of the final trailers. Like they barely put Ares in the Wonder Woman trailers. I'm expecting the same thing for Justice League. Based on previous experience with Batman v Superman Doomsday stuff last year, everybody was so bummed out after they revealed Doomsday, even though we all probably knew he was going to be in the movie. The really big takeaway, I think, is when he says, we've never really seen anything from this guy before, so it's fun to have a level playing field. He's talking about with the audience, like with us, the people that are going to see the movie. There aren't like four Aquamans before me. I get to set the tone for it. 
So I think that's why Aquaman has the chance to surprise everyone. It's the least pressure that they have. Like, obviously, there's a lot of pressure because it's going to be a $150 million movie, but it doesn't bring nearly the baggage of a character like Batman. So during the Batman movie, everyone will have crazy expectations because of how good the Dark Knight was, how much of a relationship they have with the character. So people like Aquaman, but he's nowhere near as popular as Batman. So they are having all the fun right now. And based on his description, Aquaman will be the most powerful character in the Justice League after Superman. With his trident underwater, he could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Superman easily, even though the Justice League version of Superman is way more OP than comic book Superman. But depending on which version of the trident he's using in the movie, it can actually generate its own water. And it looks like he uses it a couple times during the trailer, but we haven't seen everything it can do yet. So you'll probably see more from each of the characters the next time we get Justice League footage. But moving on to Arrow stuff, so a lot of people were taken aback because they did a bottle episode. If you're not familiar with that, that's where you do an episode that's largely self-contained that doesn't have a lot of sets so that you can save money for a later episode where you overspend because there's usually like a budget for each episode of TV that you film. So the more you spend on one episode, the less you can spend on another. So Arrow did a bottle episode with Felicity and Oliver stuck in the bunker because, you know, we've all talked about the finale, how they're going back to Lee and you. They're bringing back every awesome Arrow character that you've ever heard of. That's probably why they did this bottle episode. So it is Star Wars Day. There were a couple solid Star Wars references. This looks like the Death Star interrogation droid. They did a great job with the suspense, but let's just move on to the trailer for the next episode, episode 21, because that's when we get crazy Prometheus stuff. Every time I take a step forward, it feels like the past is pulling me back. Where are we on finding Chase? We're nowhere. I'll bet real money that Samson's working with Chase. Makes sense. They're here. So we're finally back to Crazy Town on Arrow, but at the end of last week's episode, he found Oliver's son, who's now calling himself Matthew instead of William, because they're sort of hiding out witness protection style. He's nowhere in this trailer, so that's a big part of the episode, but they're mostly hyping up Cody Rhodes coming back, working with Prometheus. So there's only a couple episodes left, and you kind of see what's going on here. Prometheus is starting to work with Oliver's greatest enemies that are still around. So there's more Black Siren on the way. He's going to start working with her. Merlin's coming back into play from Legends of Tomorrow. So if you're not caught up on that show, we can talk about it during that episode. But Merlin on Arrow has had his mind reset, so he's not going to remember anything from Legends of Tomorrow, which sounds weird, but I'll explain why they did that when I post that episode video. Then, of course, we have Big Finale, Deathstroke stuff, and and then you have all the stuff going on in The Flash too. So I'm not expecting a whole lot of crossover between the shows in the last couple of episodes, but there might be some brief moments just because the things that each team is experiencing are so different and so dire. Things are so crazy for Team Flash right now. They're so crazy for Oliver. So there's not a lot of time for them to hang out with Team Flash. But because it's Star Wars Day as I'm posting this video, my next video will be Last Jedi, so that should be up in a couple hours. Be sure to go see Guardians of the Galaxy. If you haven't seen it already, I'll be posting a couple of those videos in the next couple days too. Congratulations to the latest giveaway winner, The White Wolf. Please private message me on the back end of my channel so I can get your contact details. While you wait for that next video, you can click here for my Guardians of the Galaxy review, and you can click here for brand new Flash footage. Thank you so much for watching. Let's high five. I'll see you guys tonight.